Hello, and welcome to Jano Live. I'm Seth Drucker, Digital Media Editor at Gemma Network Open. Of course, if you're following me on live, please send us your questions or comments at Gemma Network Open on Twitter or in the comment box in Facebook or YouTube. Today, we are talking uh, about U.S. public attitudes towards COVID-19 vaccine mandates, and we have first author Emily Largent with us. Welcome. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Thank you. Great. We're really glad you could join this interesting uh, research letter. Um, so tell us a bit about who you are and what work you do and why you did the paper. Yeah, so my name is Emily Largent, as she said, and I'm an assistant professor of medical ethics and health policy at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, a lot of the work I do focuses on the ethics of human subjects research, but um, as my department chair told us at the start of the pandemic, you know, as the state of the world goes down, the need for ethics goes up. And so there have been a lot of ethics and policy issues to think about throughout the pandemic, um, which is partly how I got here. Um, the other thing that really led to this research letter in particular was that we've seen throughout the pandemic that um, in public opinion polls, despite the fact that we know that we'll probably need about 75% uptake of a vaccine to really end the pandemic and get back to some semblance in certain percentages of the U.S. population, maybe 50 or 60 percent, indicate a willingness to be vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine. So that was part of it. You know, as we think about strategies to increase uptake, mandates were one of those. The other thing that led to this is right before we fielded the survey, um, the state of Massachusetts actually said that it was going to require a flu vaccination for children over six months of age so that they could attend school in Massachusetts. And almost immediately, there was some public backlash to this. And so while the policy was motivated by trying to reduce burden on the healthcare system that people feared due to the twindemic of flu and COVID at the same time, um, you know, we did see that there were people who were highly opposed to this. And this led me and my co-authors to wonder what would happen if we mandated COVID vaccination in an effort to get back to normal. Yeah, so really interesting questions, and unfortunately still very relevant right now. Um, you know, the good news is right now we have uh, now two two vaccines with the UAs, so so it's becoming a very real question. Um, and uh, but for here for the study, just very briefly, you did a Gallup web panel in it looks like the last two weeks of September, uh, just under three thousand adults. Um, it's a little bit non representative, but then you waited to make representative. Um, and then two main things, basically looking at uh, who who's planning on getting the vaccine and then acceptability of mandates across a range of issues. So uh, tell me about what you found. Yeah, so we did find overall about 60% of the survey respondents indicated they would be likely to get a COVID-19 vaccine. And this was, as you mentioned, fielded in September. So before we had the FDA issue, those emergency use authorizations for the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. Um, and what we saw as well, and consistent with other surveys, including some that have been published in JAMA Network Open, were that we saw partisan differences in who was saying they were likely to take vaccines, as well as demographic differences. The other thing we asked about were the acceptability of, oh, go ahead, oh, no. please. Oh, no, I was, I was, it's just interesting to me because I remember looking at it a few years ago, um, probably like 2014, and uh, the vaccine hesitancy seemed to cut almost exactly horizontally across political lines, and now uh, everything we seen the pandemic, not surprisingly, it seems to be a little different than that. I do think the partisanship and the way in which this pandemic has been perceived as very politicized from the beginning has really affected what we see in terms of likelihood of vaccine uptake and also mandates. Um, we asked respondents about the acceptability of three different kinds of mandates that we were interested in. So the first of these was a state mandate for children. So all 50 states right now have some vaccine requirements for children to attend public schools. So we thought this was a familiar model. We also asked about state mandates for adults. And so while these are legal, the Supreme Court has weighed in on that previously, um, looking back to a 1905 case, Jacobson versus Massachusetts, and said that it's within states' police powers to require vaccinations for public health and safety. Um, they're not widely used. We see them amongst some populations, like healthcare workers, but really for the most part, Part, it's available to us as an option, but not used. And the third type we asked about were employer mandates for employees. And what we saw is that there's actually fairly low acceptance of mandates across the board. None of these reached even 50% acceptability, although they really did nudge right up against that 50% ceiling in many cases. And oftentimes they were highly unacceptable. And really paralleling what we saw about 
likely uptake of the COVID-19 vaccine. We saw higher willingness to have mandates amongst people who were likely to have the vaccine, as well as demographic and partisan differences in who would accept a vaccine mandate in any of those modalities, whether it was for children, adults, or for employees. Mm -hmm. One thing I found interesting is how the uh, the mandates for children were, were generally more acceptable Less, less unacceptable, um, and we're almost exactly the same for employer mandates. Yeah, I, I do think that's very interesting. Um, you know, as a parent myself, maybe other parents watching think about this, I often feel like I want to protect my child. And it was interesting that people felt like they were more willing to have the state require their child to get it than they were to get it themselves. Um, although I suspect some of this is just the familiarity of vaccine mandates for children. Um, and so sort of that familiarity breeds a certain amount of acceptance. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then I'm I'm really curious, and I I this is total speculation, but it seems to me that you know around the time of the survey in September, um, the vaccines were in the you know in the future, but there wasn't anything concrete about it. And now we actually have vaccines that, as you said, are under UAs, um, you know, are basically available. Um, there's some issues, and we'll get into that a little bit. But uh, but I'm curious if, if people are going to be if you expect people to be a little less hesitant as it becomes a more real question. The you know oh I don't know should I get a vaccine? They're still being studied. Who knows? Versus your doctor sends you an email and says you can get a vaccine tomorrow. Are you going to get it? This seems yeah. very different to me. Yeah, I would definitely acknowledge it as a limitation of when our survey was fielded. I think that now that people mm -hmm. have a vaccine out there and we're seeing really positive representations in the media, you know, just today, Dr. Tony Fauci was vaccinated quite publicly. Uh, we've also seen various members of Congress and, um, you know, Vice President Pence and President-elect Obama have, or not, <laughs> President-elect Biden have all recently and publicly went ahead and, you know, gotten their COVID-19 vaccines. And I think as people see um, figures they respect taking this up, they see that there's safety um, and hopefully they start to see some efficacy amongst these populations that the likelihood of being vaccinated will go up and that people will be drawn into this. Um, and so, yeah, I, I do think that's a difference between a hypothetical question, which is what we asked and one where we're really confronting an actual vaccine. Right. And I think you bring up two issues there. One is that, um, you know, this, this survey is almost in the absence of any messaging around the vaccine or, or public health messaging that vaccines are going to be helpful. So uh, this is kind of pre-messaging, um, which which is kind of, I think, helpful. And two is that the uh, I'm strangely optimistic that the, uh, the the fact that the demand is going to outpace supply for so long and that healthcare workers are going to be some people who are getting it first is that we're going to see, you know, when I go on Facebook right now, my entire feed is people going to med school with getting their vaccines. Uh, and I think we're going to see, you know, Despite everything that's happened last year, healthcare workers are still generally very well trusted. The health workers are signing up. There's tons of people, so, you know, sharing their shot selfies. Um, I think when you know the, the average layperson, it's time a few weeks or months from now to get the vaccine. They're going to have months of not just seeing people getting it, but also seeing, I mean, essentially months of, of data, of new safety. I think it's a great point that right now it's both a help and a hindrance that we have the phase distribution due to supply limitations. But because we are sending it to frontline workers right now, um, it is the case that we'll build up some months of hopefully goodwill and interest because people will have those reassuring messages. Great. Um, and then, I don't know, it's just that the, the I'm, I'm hopeful that we won't need mandates, I think is the... <laughs> Is kind of the last thing I'll say. It, it's hopefully there'll be enough voluntary vaccine acceptance and enough uh, decrease in prevalence that we won't need to get to mandates. Uh, where do you think we're going to land a few months from now? So I would agree with you. I think the conclusion we draw at the end of our research letter really is that mandates should be a last option given their relatively mm -hmm. high um, unacceptability, and their relatively low acceptability. Instead, I think there's sort of a multi-part strategy that should be deployed and really is being deployed already to increase uptakes. So, so one of these is that we be trustworthy in the process of vaccine approval, have robust monitoring, reporting of adverse events, and vaccine compensation. We should really think about encouraging access because we know even amongst people who are willing to take a vaccine, if there are barriers to access, that can really hinder uptake. So we need to make it free. We need to gather 
positive back to that clearing their experiences, celebrities, political figures, other people who can get the message out. Um, we also need to think about things like maybe small incentives in certain targeted instances to help people. And then mandates should really only be used if COVID continues to be a problem, uptake continues to be too low, and we've had some sort of time-limited trial of robust public health messages and other efforts to make sure that people want to take the vaccine. Um, I've seen in previous instances, HPV is a recent example where there really was backlash to that vaccine mandate such that we've maybe had a rougher, hist um, rougher rates of uptake than we would have had otherwise if there had been a little bit slower process to win hearts and minds. That's a really good point. I think there's there's probably some lessons there. I'm curious it's a little different because HPV is such a, um, I don't know, abstract cancer prevention in the future versus there's a pandemic happening now. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a really great point. And, and I agree. Hopefully we, we don't need to get to this uh, point and, and, you know, to get more vaccines out there as we get the, the supply lines up. Uh, this won't be an issue, but uh, thank you so much for coming out today. This is a really important study. Uh, it's it's really, again, straightforward and, and nice work. That That is really great to see, and I uh, appreciate the work you're doing. Thanks so much. Really appreciate the chance to speak with you. Great. Well, thanks again. Um, of course, you can get this paper and more for free and open access at GemInNetwork.com. We've got new papers coming out every weekday morning at 10 a.m. with a couple of little ex um, expected uh, breaks over the holidays. Um, with that, we're going to be taking off next week. We will be coming back on January 5th at 3 p.m. Central, normal time. So, of course, join us and take care and stay safe.